In this episode of Sports Nutrition Made Simple, we're going to run through isotonic, hypotonic and hypotonic drinks. In the sense we're talking about today, these all relate to the concentration of a drink in comparison to your blood. First up, some terms to understand. You've got osmolarity or osmolality, which are essentially interchangeable terms used to describe the concentration of a solution. You've also got tonicity, which is another way of expressing this, and it's where we get hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic from. In sports nutrition, there are two main things that can change that tonicity of a drink, and that's sodium and carbohydrates with carbohydrates being the most significant. The more sodium or carbohydrates in a drink, so essentially the more stuff it has in it, the more concentrated that drink will be. So we say it has a higher osmolarity. Less sodium and carbohydrates, the lower the concentration, the lower the osmolarity. So now let's put these into practical examples for you. If a drink is hypotonic, it has a lower concentration of stuff in it, and it has a relatively higher amount of water in it compared to your blood. Because of osmosis, water will move from that solution to any adjacent fluid. In our case, it will move from your gut into your bloodstream. This means you get a relatively rapid movement of water into your bloodstream, and so hypotonic drinks are great for maintaining your hydration. But because they have a relatively low amount of carbohydrate in, they're not great at providing energy. One thing to remember here is that even though hypotonic drinks will be lowering carbohydrates, they can still have a high amount of sodium in them and still be classified as hypotonic drinks. So their use is primarily where hydration and sodium is your focus rather than energy. There's a relatively low risk of abdominal symptoms from hypotonic drinks because they get absorbed so well. Hypertonic solutions, on the other hand, have a higher amount of stuff in than your blood, mostly from carbohydrates, which means they have a relatively lower amount of water in compared to your blood. Because of osmosis, water first has to move from your bloodstream into your gut to dilute that solution and balance things out. And technically, in the short term, this dehydrates you. It also means a higher risk of gastrointestinal symptoms because of more water being present. However, they can be fantastic for providing carbohydrates, so it might be great during long distance events where hydration isn't your main focus, or after exercise to help with recovery. Isotonic drinks have the same concentration as your blood, so there shouldn't be any immediate fluid shift, and the absorption rate is somewhere between hypotonic and hypertonic drinks. They're a bit of a middle ground and will provide more carbs than a hypotonic drink, but less carbs than a hypertonic drink. This does depend on the intensity that you're exercising at, but they should cause relatively little in the way of gastrointestinal symptoms because they should be absorbed well. So as a sum up, hypotonic drinks are the best for hydration, but the worst for providing energy. Hypertonic drinks are the best at providing energy, but the worst for hydration. Isotonics are in the middle and do a fair job of providing both carbohydrates and maintaining hydration. Which one you use depends on what your exercise is, how long it lasts, and what your main priority is. So that's the end of this Nutrition Made Simple episode. If you found it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely watch one of these videos here.